what's up you guys and welcome to another episode of the ask alex show where this is a show where i take your questions and answer them here on this show but today we have a special special interview i have a comedian legend here with us you have seen this man on deaf comedy jam many 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 times you have seen him in paper soldiers You've also seen him as an analyst on Comedy Hype, and he's the original New York Kings of Comedy. I have Capone with us here today. Capone, how are you doing today? I'm blessed, brother. Thank you for a great introduction, man. <laughs> Y'all make me feel old. Everybody call me OG or left. <laughs> <man. laughs> yeah, man, you def you definitely the OG. I mean, you've done it with the best from the the Martin Lawrence's, the Eddie Murphy's, all of them. Like you, <laughs> you are in the pantheon of comedians. And I wanted to ask you as a fan, um, how did you how did you get started in all of this? How did this how did this happen for you? Uh it's a it's a sad great story mm -hmm. i started in the music business mm -hmm. when i was in high school i had my first uh lp cut in high school mm -hmm. and i got signed to this deal with uh ventertainment which was the same label that keeps sweat and in touch with on mm -hmm. and it didn't go through i wound up being on the shelf and wound up being bitter about the music business then i went into uh, the streets, drug dealing, but I've always had a mm. a smart, witty mouth, you know, the guy who you snap on me and mm. it was dangerous. So <laughs> <laughs> I just took it to the next step of uh, comedy and fell in love with it, man. And the rest is history. Man, man. Okay. So I wanted to ask you, what was the, what was it like being your first time on Def Jam? Because not a <laughs> Def Jam, you see I mean, all of the, the top comedians coming out of there today from your Kevin Hart's to your Martin Lawrence's right. to everyone has been like, what was it like your first time on Def Comedy Jam? It was kind of like a revengeful thing because mm -hmm. at the time when when I came home from prison, mm -hmm. Def Jam was scouting out comedians and mm -hmm. uh, they didn't pick me the first time around. And I was very, very upset with it because... Mm -hmm. At the time that uh, they picked some of the comedians, they couldn't touch me. But yeah. you know, time time tells everything. And uh, yeah. when the when it came around again, uh, they couldn't deny me. As a matter of fact, they couldn't deny me so much that uh, I did it twice, two years back to back. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was a great thing. Oh, okay, that's that's what's up. Now I also want to ask because I, I I was recently watching some of your uh, previous uh, uh, specials or, or shows on Def Comedy Jam, I think you're one of the most, uh, well, I would say underrated out of the most because you're a whole lot, you tell you tell a whole lot of funny stories that are very real <laughs> in our com community. And right. like, it, they're, so, they're so relatable in a sense. And you incorporate the whole, uh, you know, the drug life, but also just how, how that become became, I, I guess, a way of life for you into uh, right. falling into to comedy. And I wanted to ask you, uh, speaking of comedy and also like Hollywood and things of that nature, how did you land a role in um, Paper Soldiers with, that's what's with Kevin Hart <laughs> and all those other different comedians. That's like a very underrated movie in our community as well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, uh, Damon came, uh, Dame Dash, should mm -hmm. I say, I don't wanna say Damon. <laughs> he brought he brought the whole crew down to Caroline's. I was performing at Caroline's doing a show. Mm -hmm. And it was my show. And uh, Damon, he loves comedians. As a matter of fact, undercover, I think he wants to be a comedian. And, yeah. But he also likes heckling and snapping on comedians. <laughs> and uh, he came to the show. Mm -hmm. And he pulled me to the side after the show. He said, yo, I got a movie. I might, I'm, you know, you might be interested in doing with me. So I was... Yeah, I was excited right off the top. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kevin Hart was my opening act at the time. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So I had, a, I had a couple of comedians that opened up for me at the show. And he said, um, and I want you to bring the little guy too. I, I, I think I got a part for him. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, any other comedians? He said, nah, just you two. Mm -hmm. And so we went down to the office maybe two days later mm -hmm. on Monday or Tuesday. And uh, that's how Paper Soldier started. Oh. I actually was supposed to have the lead role, but Kevin, Kevin fitted a lot better. And Dame, you know, yeah. Dame has a way of smoothing things out. He was like, don't worry about it. I got you on the next one. You'll lead the movie. Mm -hmm. And he was right. 
which was the next movie was Death of a Dynasty. Yeah. Yeah. And I was going to bring that up, like, because you were definitely the lead in Death of the Dynasty. Yeah. And I was going to ask you how that came about. But I guess they kind of just linked together, yeah. which, which is another underrated uh, movie in our community as well. Uh, how What was it like being on set and working with those actors and comedians <laughs> as well? Um, Great feeling. You know, uh, Dame. Dame has a, a very, very, uh, uh, I guess, business way of just mm-hmm. making things happen, letting you see the vision before it's there. And, and uh, I enjoyed working with them, you know, period. It was, a, it was a, a great thing. And the one thing I really liked about them, there was no boundaries. Yeah. You know, some people you go into the, the, the movie setting where you have to have a permit for this. Dame was like smart. There was a scene where we was in the movie theater and we just started filming in there. <laughs> <laughs> so it was it was a great thing, man. Oh, okay. That's what's up. Yeah, like uh yeah, nowadays in shooting anything, you need a permit for something. Yeah. You gotta have a permit for anything nowadays. But I needed I wanted to ask though, um, I noticed you you constantly are touring, you're constantly, right. you know, uh doing shows and all this <laughs> other stuff. You're kind of like I wouldn't say under under the radar, because when I had like TK Kirkland on the show, like he mentioned you in terms of the underground comedians where y'all do right. shows and y'all all y'all always stay working and you're really big on black, like building black business and you don't yeah. need Hollywood to get to where you are. That's kind of how I feel about my yeah. space. Uh, how did you get, you know, how did you get to that grind, that, that period in your life where you say, you know what, I don't need them to do this. I'm just going to do it my way. The, the thing is that nobody can tell me I'm funny. Nobody can tell me I I know that that's a God's gift. Yeah. And the thing, the sad part about it is that many of us have it, but we rely on uh, the powers that be. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to just say white people because there are black people in those positions that do the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, take a chance on yourself. If you really think you're that funny mm-hmm. and you really think that you got what it takes, take a chance on yourself. A lot of times people just wait around for that phone call. And I, I, I can't do that. I mm-hmm. have to uh, make things happen. And when I started, I didn't get a fair shake. You know, I, I was mm-hmm. the guy who wanted to know about Hollywood. I wanted to know what it took to make it. And the people who had the, the power to do it really didn't look out. And so yeah. I said, I see what I got to do, period. And that's what I did. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I noticed like throughout the course of me following you ever since I, I found you on, on comedy hype, uh, you are constantly promoting your shows, events, yeah. all this other stuff. You stay working even through something as the pandemic, which I, my next question was like, yeah. how are you able to stay consistent <laughs> during a time where everything is somewhat closed and mandates are lifted, things of that nature. Visionary. You got to be a visionary. And mm-hmm. one thing about me is I never, try to look through the vision of someone else's eyes and um i think the thing that keeps me motivated is that i have the power to help people Mm -hmm. the young comedians that i have rolling with me these guys are hungry they didn't get a fair shake like i didn't get Mm -hmm. and so if i have the opportunity or the power to put them in a position to where they can make some money and also grow and become famous or whatever it is that their desires are Mm -hmm. i can make that happen and I've been doing so, you know, you don't have to have to be, you know, the, the concept that people have mentally is that you have to be some big star in order to sell out arenas. And yeah. I've been selling out my shows and everywhere that we went because I believe that, you know, you give a guy a chance and he's hungry, he's mm-hmm. going to do the right thing. And that's yeah. what I've been rolling with my guys with. Yeah. Yeah. And I noticed that in some of your, well, in in all of your shows, really, that whoever's opening for you or with you, you always give them the spotlight before you touch that mic. But I will say, uh, uh, because I've been been to one of your shows in Atlanta. Can't nobody follow you, bro. (laughs) 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 It just, I mean, because it's a a whole nother, like, I feel the same way about TK. When people try to follow him, I'm like, nah, I can't, I can't. I can't really see it, you know, so right. but I, I wanted to ask, man, like um, originally when Comedy Height reached out to you, you did an interview with them. Um, and then right. now you are actually analysts on Comedy Height. So right. how did that come about uh, you actually being a full time, uh, I, I guess, analyst on the, on yeah. the show? Well, um, a, a couple of things took place. One, 
the creator john had a vision and mm-hmm. he put me in the vision mm-hmm. um he's always he's always been an up and up guy with me you know mm-hmm. it's been uh uh somebody who allowed me to have a voice in just my interviews and i don't sugarcoat shit as you know uh, exactly. you know, so <laughs> yeah. when they came up with the show i i think that was a perfect marriage because you know pierre speaks his mind mm-hmm. um i speak my mind which is great and uh symphony who is the person who actually ties things together is great at it yeah but you know we've had two different female analysts and both of them mm-hmm. were amazing you know vanessa yeah. fraction yeah um is there with us now and uh it's just a great chemistry, man. And even though it seems like we argue, it's okay to disagree. Yeah. And that's what it's about. Shout out to Rita. She was there first. <laughs> yeah, she was. So a dope yeah. comedian, by the way, as well. Yeah, she's uh, phenomenal. Uh, but speaking of speaking of uh, comedy hype, because uh, speaking of what you say, like you guys argue, but it seems like a family. Every time I watch right. uh, comedy hype, you guys are discussing <laughs> different topics whether you and Pierre like disagree with something, it seems like two <laughs> brothers really just having a big disagreement. And it's, it's funny to watch though, because it's like, you feel some type of way and then Pierre feels yeah. some type of way, but how did y'all get to that? I guess that pace of that place of comfortability, because I, I'm sure you've known Pierre way before comedy hype. Yeah, I have. Mm. And I've always had a respect for Pierre, mm-hmm. but I found out something during the, beginning the comedy hype. Pierre admitted to me that he didn't like me. Oh, man. And you getting this exclusive. He admitted. He was like, what? He didn't like <laughs> yeah. And he said it because he said, I didn't understand you. He said, your aura. Mm-hmm. I have a very confidence aura about myself. And sometimes mm-hmm. that confidence can come off cocky to other people. Mm-hmm. And he said he really misled me. Mm-hmm. And we talked about it. And I was shocked because you know, I had no bad, nothing bad to mm. say about him. I always respected his comedy. I respected what he was doing back when he was doing it with the movies. Mm-hmm. And when he said that, it shocked me, but I definitely appreciated knowing it because you don't want to go into something and there's hidden agendas there. So, yeah. you know, we kind of got that out the way and just moved forward with, what's the name? You know, no love loss, mm-hmm. just a, a misunderstanding or something. And he admitted it, and I really appreciate that about him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's dope to get it all out in the yeah. open that way now, because it seems like now y'all are just always like cool and you know, oh, yeah. giving, giving yeah. each other you know uh, good advice. But I wanted to ask, uh, which kind of you kind of use comedy hype in a sense to parlay what you're all also doing in the and you know right now in the future and things of that nature. And you are part of the original New York Kings of Comedy. How did that group? come about because i know at one point like i don't know like was there an interview you did with comedy hype where i guess y'all had some issues but y'all worked things out like oh that was it's been three different groups of the new york kings Mm -hmm. and uh uh the original players are talent rob stapleton gerald Mm -hmm. kelly drew Mm frazier and myself Mm -hmm. and uh some things happened and gerald was the first uh, you know, to leave the group. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Drew left the group. And then we uh, put on Mark Vieira, who is like the Latin sensation, a mm-hmm. beast of comedy. And uh, it's been, you know, it's, it has its up and downs when you got four guys. Mm-hmm. The things that we used to deal with when we were younger, we don't deal with, with anymore. Yeah. But it, it's still, there are some issues that still remain there because I mean, hands down, it's hard to touch any one of us when we're on stage, especially as a group. But, you know, people are not hiring that. They're mm-hmm. hiring, you know, the, 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 <laughs> the uh, I guess the best way to put it is the internet guys. Yeah. You know, so it's a, it's a difference. And when you got four veterans and they look as, you know, they try to make you feel old. Mm-hmm. it's it's crazy until you see it on stage and you see the magic and that's when everything sparks back up yeah yeah and um it's funny that you brought up the internet guys because there's a lot of in- internet comedians who are <coughs> high rocket they're like some of them on wild and out and then some of them yeah. are just doing their own thing i wanted to ask you in this new age of comedy um because I, I i can tell even as as a 29 year old there's definitely a stark difference but would you say 
it's a little bit more, I guess, easier to get into this genre <laughs> than it was when you first started. Cause it's like, if you have an Instagram and you're somewhat <laughs> funny, you just blow up within like months, depending on who you are, you know? Well, it depends on what you consider blow up. Cause okay. a lot of these, a lot of these guys, and I don't, I don't knock them. And the reason I don't knock them is mm. because there was a time I was one of them and not an internet guy, mm -hmm. but the Richard Pryors and the, the, the guys who before me mm -hmm. felt that Def Jam made it easy for us to become successful yeah. because they didn't have Def Jam. Yeah. So they was like, yeah, y'all guys wouldn't be shit if Def Jam didn't put y'all all out and all that. Mm -hmm. So I respect what they do. It's hard work. And um, my thing is, you know, I'm not here to judge anybody. Whatever floats mm -hmm. your boat, it's, mm -hmm. it's, you have to look at it different ways. I'm a businessman. Mm -hmm. And if I own the comedy club and you ain't funny, but you can put a thousand people in the seats, mm -hmm. I'm going to have you at my comedy club. That's the bottom line. <laughs> I mean, hey, yeah, at the end of the day, <laughs> it's business, you know, like. Yeah, that's what it is. So, I mean, I, I, I definitely understand that. But yeah, yeah, man. But uh, I'm so glad I was able to have you on the show last year. Like I was telling you off camera before um, I had Pierre on the show. So I was glad to get you on the show as well um uh before we wrap uh the interview i wanted to ask uh, what are you what are you doing in the next few weeks i see you got a couple things lined up um in I'll different in, cities yeah i'll be in houston texas mm -hmm. i'll be at uh uh levity live which is uh with the new york kings mm -hmm. uh the team capone will be in houston uh this coming weekend and uh man it's just so much going on Mm. so much you know we're trying i'm trying to uh i'm trying to be the first one to get these young guys to get a netflix special without having any kind of mm. of uh what do you say the best way to say it is they don't have any credits they never oh. been on tv they don't have no commercial and so i'm trying to sign a deal where i'm able to get my young guys a netflix special and uh mm -hmm. you know make it happen man because that's the way to be man you gotta you got to help people out in order to help yourself. And if I didn't have these these hard hitting young dudes mm -hmm. hitting the stage the way they was, I'd probably be a mediocre. But since they mm -hmm. are coming hard, I got to keep it hard. And yeah, it's been great. Oh, man, that's actually uh, really impactful to hear that uh, we see an OG doing something for for the young guys. And like, you know, like you said, like if you can be that voice for them and, you know, that that totem pole for them. Who knows what could happen? So yeah, man, I I definitely will support it. I definitely love your comedy, man. But um, I want to thank you so much for being on the show. Where can we find you on um social media, and also where can we find you on comedy hype? <laughs> <laughs> uh, comedy hype comes on every day. Mm -hmm. Um, social media, hit me up, comedian Capone. I answer my own things. Y'all know. Mm -hmm. I'm not with the Hollywood bullshit. And so <laughs> <laughs> I'm a real dude. Just keep it positive, man. I don't want no negativity, mm -hmm. no bad energy on my page. I'm a very, very spiritual person. And I believe uh, whatever you want in life, man, will come true. All you got to do is ask for it and work hard for it. I know that's right, because I know at one point I never thought I'd be talking to a comedian Capone. And <laughs> look what happened. Like, if this, right, if, this, if this is not a testament that God isn't real, God is very <laughs> real. God is very, very real. But I want to thank you so much for being on the show, man. And thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Go follow all of us on social media. And also, you guys, thank you so much for watching and have a blessed day. <laughs>